Good morning and welcome to Grace Fellowship, a church for all What's nations. Up? I'm Pastor Dan and this is Pastor Lowe, our worship pastor, and we are so glad that you are joining us today. And today is a special day because today is All, all Nations, Nations Sunday. Sunday. Yes. And I'm really excited to hear what sure. Pastor Jeff is going to preach on Absolutely. today and talk about. It's going to be a really fun day. It is indeed. It's going to be an exciting day. I'm so excited for the service. And we want you to know that starting November, well, number one, we're back to our in-person services for hey, 8.30 hey. and 10 o'clock today. And starting next Sunday, November 15th, Tell we're going to be doing the 11.30 service also on campus. We're so <laughs> excited. All three services are right here on campus. And awesome. hey, we, we want you to know that uh, we're taking every uh, measure, great uh, precaution to make sure that you feel safe. I mean, yeah. we are, we're cleaning. It's clean. It, it is clean. Yeah. It's clean. Yeah. So come and join us. We made room by adding the third service so you don't feel so tight, but uh, we're excited for what God has uh, in store for us. And also Grace Kids uh, yes, is open, is. right? Absolutely. It's we open. are rolling. Bring your kids. We're ready to receive them. Also next Sunday as well, along with the 1130 service starting. Grace students will be back and they yeah. will be meeting for the 1130 service and it's going to be in the 200 building and we would love for you to join. Well, that's really awesome. Yeah, awesome to hear that Number one, our third service is starting Woo! again, and Grace students. So yes. that's a great thing. I've no got doubt. two older boys. They're hey. ready to go. Indeed. And uh, <laughs> so great. Also, Wednesdays, as you might know, are big days around mm -hmm. here uh, with two important elements. Number cool. one, it starts off with Worship Wednesday at 10 a.m. Yep. with this guy and his <laughs> team right here. And that is just one worship song at 10 o'clock in the morning. If you can break away and get on any platform that you choose yeah. between Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube, Correct, yeah. uh, it's one worship song that these guys have recorded for you, and it's awesome. So if you can get away at 10 a.m. on your device, whether it be your computer, your phone, your tablet, whatever, um, worship with us at 10 a.m. Yeah. on Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube. You're Indeed. awesome, by the way, for doing oh, that. Oh, man, stop it. <laughs> and, stop well, it, I really mean it. that. But <laughs> And then also, Deep Dive at 5. So Wednesdays at 10 a.m. with Worship Wednesdays and Deep Dive at 5 on Wednesdays as well. Indeed. And as Pastor Jeff and our other pastors go in just a little bit deeper yeah. um, at Deep Dive at 5. Pulling out those nuggets. Pulling out the nuggets yeah. of deep theological hey, truth, come on. and that's this Wednesday. Don't yes. want to miss it. It's on Facebook and YouTube. Absolutely. And uh, so you don't want to miss that. So Worship Wednesdays, Deep Dive at 5. I see what you did there. YouTube, you don't want to miss that. You know, yeah. that you know, was the not YouTube by design. Because you don't. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, well, we're excited about that. Also, starting point this past weekend was amazing. Yes, we had um, a lot of people in attendance, a lot of people make commitment to be a part of our church and, great. and just learn about what's going on here yeah. and and that that is what starting point is about it's the on ramp to everything grace fellowship learn about our vision our mission what we believe etc and ways to get plugged in the next one is happening december 6th via zoom you don't want to miss it it's going to be an incredible time well you know what it is yeah. i I think we made it to the end. We did. Uh, wow, we already? It. Yeah, it went quick, doesn't it? It, it did. It yeah, felt that way. Yeah. Well, and guess what? Being that we're at the end, that yeah. means that service starts. Welcome to Grace Fellowship, a church for all nations online. We're so glad that you've joined us today. And today here at Grace is a special day. It is All Nations Sunday. And I'm so thankful that as a church, as a people, we have a reason to see God has been so good. In the past, he's doing great things today. And he's going to continue to do great things because he is good. So come on, let's worship him this morning. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Come on, say that again, Lord. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. People from every, people from every nation. 
generation in town From generation to generation We worship you
Galatians 3, 23 through 29. Now before faith came, we were held captive under the law, imprisoned until the coming faith would be revealed. So then the law was our guardian until Christ came, in order that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer under a guardian. For in Christ Jesus, you are all sons of God through faith. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There's neither Jew nor Greek. There's neither slave nor free. There's neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. 1 Corinthians 12, 14 through 20. For the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would be the sense of hearing? If the whole body were an ear, where would be the sense of smell? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them, as he chose. If they were all a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, yet one body. In John 17, 14 through 23, it says, I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they're not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. They are not of this world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them in your truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sake, I consecrate myself that they may also be sanctified in truth. I do not ask for these only, but also for those who believe in me through their word, that they may all be one, just as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given to them, that they may be one even as we are one. I in them and you in me, that they may be perfectly one, so that the world may know that you sent me and love them even as you loved me. Amen. Matthew 28, 19 through 20 says this. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always, even unto the end of the age. You know, a few days ago, the Lord gave uh, me a song, I believe, and we were able to write it uh, along with some of the teams, a Grace Worship original. But I believe it's the heart of God, that the people of God, we are as one because we have believed and trusted in our Savior. And so He desires for us to come together and live on mission and be all that He's called us to be. So as we sing this next song, I pray that it, it ministers to your heart. And it gives you an ambition and a mission to live on a mission for Christ. We all have a testimony. God has written our story. Christ crucified, we live in His resurrection. Oh, let's come together and people of God. We are God's children. Created from purpose, every nation, tribe, and tongue. Oh, yes. Christ is not divided. Oh, no. So, why? His glory 
for the church to rise. Oh, let's come together, all people of God. We are God's children, created for purpose. Every nation tries. If God be for us, who can come against us? Oh, we have a mission to make Christ known. Oh, yes. Would you change our minds? Change our hearts, yes. God. Let your will be done, oh, change our minds, oh, yes, oh, change our hearts, oh, God, God, please make us, make us one, yes, change So help us, Jesus, to be the church, to be as one. God, we thank you for where you've brought us from. God, we thank you for what you're going to do in the future. There's so much work to be done. So help us, Lord, not to worry about the foolish things of this world, but to focus on the things that matters most. That we're here to not build our own kingdom, but to build your kingdom, to make much of you, to help people hear the gospel, believe the gospel. Give us the grace we need, Lord. Only you can bring us together, Lord. Help us to be the church. Help us to live on mission. We love you. We thank you, God. Have thine own way. In Jesus' name we pray together we said amen and amen thank you so much worship team for sharing with us that grace original that's awesome 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 work guys welcome again to grace fellowship a church for all nations here on all nations sunday we're gonna have a great time diving into the word of god here in just a few moments but before we do that an essential part of what we believe a church family is is being connected to one another so a way that we can do that is called the connect card all you have to do is open up the photo app on your smart device and point that at the screen or you can go to our website at gogracefellowship.org and let 
us know whether you want to make a decision to follow Jesus, whether this is your first time with us. Uh, we would like to know. And also, if you have a prayer need or a prayer request, we want to encourage you in your walk with Jesus Christ. So you want to go ahead and do that um, as we continue in worship. Our verse for today is Proverbs chapter 11, verse 25. The Bible says, whoever brings blessing will be enriched and one who waters will himself be watered. And we know that we can never outgive God. So if you're a new follower of Christ or if you're new here to Grace Fellowship, we wanna encourage you to take this incredible step as a follower of Jesus to begin to give to the Lord, to be faithful in that. That means when God uh, pays you, you give to the Lord to just allow him that channel to work joy and to uh, to really change your heart. It's a progressive uh, sense of your heart being aligned towards what God values and what God loves. So there's several ways that you can do that. You can give on the website uh, or through the app or uh, here in the giving boxes in the house. So let's take a moment. We're going to pray for our time of giving and our time of worship through giving. And then we're going to look at God's word this morning. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the grace that you give us in Jesus Christ. We thank you that no matter what is going on in the world, you have promised to be our provider. So Lord Jesus, help us to continue to live in faith. And God, we thank you for the faithfulness of so many in Grace Fellowship, a church for all nations. Father, I pray that for so many of our members, our regular attenders that have just been through this year, just faithful, faithful, faithful to your church and to your work. God, I just pray that you would give them an incredible, incredible blessing of joy and provision in the way that you know that uh, where they need that. And so God, we pray for all of us that you'll just grow us in our faith, grow us in our focus on the good news of Jesus. And we pray this in his name. Amen. Welcome to All Nations Sunday at Grace Fellowship, a church for all nations. What a time to be alive. So, so where do we go from here? What do we do as followers of Jesus Christ in times of uncertainty and times of tremendous division? Most of us, we rightly look for somewhere to stand. We look for a point of stability in our lives. So as your pastor of our church, let me give you some stability this morning. Hear me clearly. God has been, is, and will continue to be at work in the world. Today we're going to focus on what God has done in the past and how God has brought us here at this church to this point and what God can and will continue to do in the future. I want you, brother and sister in Christ, to have a rock-solid point of stability in your life. I want you to look to Jesus today, the author and the perfecter of our faith. I don't want you, I don't want your life to be, to be defined by fluctuation in what happens in the world. Yes, things have consequences. Yes, we want to be involved as people where God has placed us and the opportunities that he's laid before us. But one thing we must remember as followers of Jesus Christ, it is his world and he is sovereign over all. So today we celebrate All Nations Sunday at Grace Fellowship at Church for All Nations. And we're going to see through the pages of God's word this morning how God has been at work in the world. Jesus says in Luke chapter 13, verse 29, and people will come from east and west and from north and south and recline at table in the kingdom of God. Jesus wedges this verse into a long conversation about the work of God throughout the centuries and throughout the millennia, and even many of those who were listening to Jesus at that time. 
the possibility that there could be people from outside of ethnic Israel who would not only be a part of God's larger family, who would be part of the redeemed, but they would literally be in his family. They would be one people, was beyond imagination. So brothers and sisters, this morning, I want you to see the heart of God through scripture. And if you're not yet a follower of Christ, or you may consider yourself a a seeker, and you're just seeking to learn more about what Christianity actually is, I hope that this morning it would clarify for you God's heart for all nations. So we see from the garden, we could say the garden of Eden to the manger when baby Jesus was born. We see creation in Genesis chapter 1, verse 31, and God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. But just a couple of chapters later, we find paradise lost when humanity fell from grace and disobeyed God, and from that sin and brokenness entered into the world. But in the midst of catastrophe, we find in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, what's called the Proto-Evangelium. It was the first gospel. It was the first promise in the Bible after humanity rebelled against God that God would bring about a Savior. Notice what it says, Genesis 3, 15. God says, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between, this is speaking of Satan, your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. The idea is that God is is giving Adam and Eve and and Satan kind of this, this lecture saying that there will be damage, there will be brokenness, there will be fallout from sin, that Satan's desire is to strip God of his right to be God, to persecute and kill and destroy those who were made in the image of God. God says there will be, there will be brokenness, there will be suffering in the world, but through the seed of the woman, there will be one who will crush the head of the serpent. And we see God continuing throughout the pages of Genesis to remind the people of a promise of blessing through Israel that would bless all people. God speaks to Abram, the first Hebrew there in chapter 12, verses 2 and 3. God says, and I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and to him who dishonors you I will curse. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. God says the same thing over in chapter 22, verse 18. And in your offspring shall all the nations, all the, notice the the phrase, All the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. God is promising. He's promising his people. He's promising the world, even in the earliest chapters of the first book of the Bible, that even though there was paradise lost, even though there was a fracturing that entered into the cosmos because of our forefather and our foremother's sin against God, that God would send a savior, that God's heart for the nations was revealed and would be revealed through the Messiah. You see, God has been and is at work in the world. And then you fast forward many chapters later and you see God pulling his people out of slavery in Egypt only to give them the promised land that was won with a big asterisk, but it was squandered. It was the opportunity that God gave his people to be a light unto the nations, but by and large, they persecuted the prophets and pushed back against what God had called them to do. If you've ever wondered what the Old Testament was about and why God called the Hebrew people to be his own, it was so that they could be a witness to the world of the greatness of our God. Notice Isaiah 42, and we're going to look at several streams of this in the Old Testament. We see in verses 6 and 7, God says, I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I will take you by the hand and keep you. I will give you as a covenant for the people, a light for the nations. For what purpose? Notice verse 7. To open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison, those who sit in 
darkness. Isaiah chapter 49 verse 6 says these words, I will make you as a light for the nations that my salvation may reach to the ends, the end of the earth. Again, this is the Old Testament. Then Isaiah chapter 52 verse 10, it says the Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations. God's got the cutoff. He's flexing. He's showing his power. And all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. Isaiah chapter 60 verse 3 says, and all nations shall come to your light. But unfortunately, the pages of the Old Testament show that God's people became preoccupied with the sin of those who dwelled in the land before they showed up, that they became captivated by other gods. They became captivated and their hearts were turned away from the Lord. Even the kings, multiple kings whose job it was to set the moral trend for the people of God, their hearts became inclined to follow other gods. And in the fall of the 10 northern tribes, the tribes of Israel happened in 722 BC when the, when the Assyrians took over the capital city of Samaria. And then in 586, 587 BC, the Babylonian armies came and laid siege to Jerusalem itself. And Solomon's temple, one of the wonders of the ancient world, was burned to the ground. God's people that were placed there to be a light to all of the nations, went into exile because of their idolatry. And then there was 400 years of silence. They were a people in exile. Some of them later returned to the land of Israel, but there was no more prophetic Vision. There was no more word from God. It was stale and cold and dead. And during this time, groups like the Sadducees grew. Groups that denied the afterlife and denied the resurrection. Groups like the Pharisees who just added to the word of God. But you see, God was not done with the world. God was still at work in the world. He was still at work when everything seemed to be lost. When even the people of God had become obsessed with idolatry and they were, they, they, they were exiled and then they came back out of exile into the land of Israel, but they still had the idols in their hearts. That's the reason why Jesus repeated what we find in the Old Testament about idol worshipers, that even though they have ears to hear and eyes to see, they don't see and they don't hear. But when Jesus came into that world, that time, we, we don't find the Jewish people worshiping physical idols, but they had the idols of pride. They had the idols of false religion and self-righteousness. But the time that Jesus came into the world, it was, according to Galatians chapter 4, verse 4, when the fullness of time had come. God sent forth his son, born of woman. It was this time that Jesus came into the world to where you had monsters like Herod the Great and you had the Roman Empire that was oppressing the whole known world essentially at that time. But you see, even though the people of God, their hearts were far from him, even though the Gentile world, you had ethnicity against ethnicity, you had nation against nation, God was still at work in the world. And then we find those beautiful words of Jesus Christ himself when he's in his his ministry in John chapter 8, verse 12, when Jesus himself spoke to them saying, I am am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. You see, in the Old Testament, God set up his people to be a light to the nations. But Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the light came into the world to be a light to all nations. And Jesus explaining what would happen in the end times. This is to his disciples in Matthew chapter 24, verses 7 and 8. 
He uses the word again, nation, for nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are but the beginning of the birth pains. People look at what has happened around the world this year and say, Pastor Jeff, is, does this mean that Jesus is coming back? There have always been ethnicity rising against ethnicity. This group against this group, this tribe against this tribe, this nation against that. But Jesus says the end is not yet to come. This is the beginning of birth pains. Brothers and sisters, I believe that Jesus Christ could return to this world at any moment. And ever since he ascended into heaven, we have been in the last days. But before Jesus ascended into heaven, he gathers around his disciples, his inner circle, and then those who were uh, disciples uh, beyond that. And he gave them the great commission in Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 through 20. This was the spreading of the good news to all the nations. He said, go and make disciples of all nations. They heard that, but they were still gathered together. A number of days after that, and then Acts chapter 2, it tells us about Peter's sermon at Pentecost. Acts chapter 2, verse 5 tells us, for, Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And Peter preaches this incredible sermon. And over 3,000 people are saved that day. And God begins to work in the people's hearts and they begin to scatter out from Jerusalem to go into all the world to make disciples of all nations. You see, even though there has been persecution, even though there are upheavals in the world, it doesn't mean that God is not at work. He is. Acts chapter 13, verses 47 and 48, when Paul and Barnabas are trying to explain to their fellow Jews that God desires Gentiles to be saved as well. They say these words, For so the Lord has commanded us, saying, I have made you a light for the Gentiles, that you may bring salvation to the ends of the earth. He's going back to the Old Testament. He says it's always God's plan. His heart for the nations was to bring salvation. Verse 48, and when the Gentiles heard this, they began rejoicing and glorifying the word of the Lord. And as many as were appointed to eternal life believed. Here's these Gentiles who were caught up in such darkness. They were so overjoyed because what they realized is that Jesus is for me as well. And then in Acts chapter 26, verses 22 through 23, we see the apostle Paul before a leader giving his testimony, and he says, to this day, I have had the help that comes from God. And so I stand here testifying, both to small and great, saying nothing but what the prophets and Moses said would come to pass, that the Christ must suffer, and that by being the first to rise from the dead, he would proclaim, here it is, light both to our people and to the Gentiles. And this is where things take off at breakneck speed, where you have the spread of the gospel all over the known world in the first century, but you also have opposition. But the people of God continue to share. They continue to go forward, even under persecution, because they understood that God was at work in the world. In several centuries after when false teaching had crept into the church, one of my heroes from early church history is Athanasius of Alexandria. He was a godly man in North Africa who was exiled 16 of his 45 years in the ministry. When the, when the political power would shift, Sometimes he would be exiled into the wilderness for holding to the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. This godly man that his, that his opponents called the black dwarf is a giant in the pages of church history. You have a faithful man who understood that God is at work in the world. So even if I lose my job, even if I'm exiled, even if the political powers of his time said you can no longer do what you do, he, fa he stayed faithful to the Lord Jesus Christ because he understood that God was at work in the world. 
I think of the great American black preacher named John Jasper who lived from 1812 to 1901. He was a former slave and had experienced such heartbreak and such inhumanity in his life that even as a young man, he became so crushed and burdened by what he had experienced. But one day he heard somebody share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Even though he grew up in a Christian home, even though his father and mother were godly people, the love of Jesus Christ contrasted with the cruelty and the the inhumanity that he had experienced. And he gave his life to Jesus Christ and became one of the greatest preachers this country has ever produced because he understood that even in my pain, God is still at work in the world. One of my friends from... My seminary days was raised in the former Soviet Union. And as a university student, she was led to Jesus Christ by the efforts of Korean missionaries working through a Russian translator. And she became a follower of Jesus Christ and she went home to her father who was a communist party member, a dedicated Marxist, an atheist, And she shared the good news of Jesus Christ with him. And let me show you what he's up to today. That's what he's doing today because he's a pastor in the former Soviet Union winning people to Jesus Christ. Because I can imagine there'd be somebody in that church in Korea who would say, why are you going to the, why are you going to the former Soviet Union? You don't even speak Russian. They said, we'll find somebody, we, we, can speak, we can speak English to somebody who knows English, so we'll find a Russian who knows English, and we're going to go that way, and we're going to get the gospel there, because Jesus Christ has called us to make disciples of all nations. You see, I praise God for those godly Korean missionaries who said, you know what, even if there's a big mountain, God is in control of the mountain, I will not stop, I will not allow excuses to determine what I will do, Jesus is the one who is called me to do it. And if he said all nations, then let's find a way to do it. Many of the streams in in my life, just to be very honest, that have shaped my, my heart for Jesus Christ comes from my parents and people who have lived through persecution. One of those would be one of my mentors, Elijah Soritau, who was raised in the former communist country of Romania. And I remember him sharing with me, he says, Jeff, it was so incredibly difficult. Gas was rationed, food was rationed. You couldn't openly share about Jesus Christ. And if you were a pastor who taught the word of God, you would be put in jail, you would possibly be killed. But I remember him sharing the night that that communism collapsed in his country. He said what the news networks did not report is that there were hundreds of thousands of underground Christians who had organized a prayer meeting and they were praying and as they prayed more just came out into the streets and they were praying openly and he says I truly believe the reason why communism fell in my beautiful country of Romania is because the people of God prayed. Why did they pray? Because they knew that they prayed to a God who lives. They knew that they were praying to a God who is still at work in the world. Another one of my friends, Ishmael, grew up in a region of Africa that was and continues to be a hotbed for Islamic terrorism. And as a teenager, he was, well, they tried to recruit him to become a shaheed, to become a martyr, to, he said, to blow myself up. And he said, but as I began to talk to the leaders who were trying to recruit me, he says, I want to see you do it first and then I will commit. And he said, they became very angry when I said, you first. He says, I didn't really know what to believe until a missionary came to my town and shared the gospel of Jesus Christ with me. And would you believe that through the work of God, through those missionaries and in his life, He got saved and he became a Christian leader, became a powerful preacher, and today is serving in the United States military as a chaplain, winning soldiers to Jesus Christ. Because God, you see, God is at work in the world. A young man in our church was raised in a large communist country in Asia. 
and heard the gospel of Jesus Christ, heard the good news in what is still a very much closed country to the good news of Jesus. And God did a work in his heart. God opened his eyes, opened his heart to the beauty of Jesus Christ. And he became a follower of Jesus. And he was baptized, check this out, in a bathtub in an apartment in that country. And then through what God had done in his heart, he began to have a passion, a a driving passion to see his parents become followers of Jesus Christ. And he shared the gospel with them and they became followers of Jesus. And he came here to this country, to a university in Florida and got a Christian education and is now a godly, godly young man. You see, it's because God is still at work in the world. In the 19th century, a missionary went to Southeast Asia and shared the gospel with a man with the last name of Raj. The man's heart was so touched by the good news of Jesus that he became a follower of Jesus in a Hindu majority culture. And this man who had been so deeply changed by our Lord and Savior, and he was so grateful for the efforts of this missionary, he said, I want to change my last name to your last name. The missionary's last name, that is. And five generations later, his great, 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 great grandson is now a powerful witness for Jesus Christ, Richard Horshington, here in the business community of South Florida, and is a pillar in this church, and is actively involved in getting the gospel back into, in a deeper way, Southeast Asia. Brothers and sisters, I don't know if anybody is hearing me, but God is at work in the world. Another family in our church, the story is that he was a little boy fleeing when Vietnam fell to communism. And they were on an old boat trying to get to Thailand. And as they were making their way out of Vietnam in the open ocean, trying to get to some semblance of freedom, they were approached by pirates, actually pirates, who came up and were about to board their vehicle. And he said, we didn't know if we would survive. We were doubtful. But then one of the owners of the boat said, there's some old antiquated rusted out firearms that are down in the hull of the ship. Get those and put them through the port holes and maybe that will scare the pirates off. Well, it was a ruse and it worked. And the pirates thought that they were armed to the teeth. They thought that they were, uh, that they were ready to go. But in fact, none of the weapons even worked. And the pirates got out of there as quick as they could. And this young man comes to Thailand. He was able to come to the United States, met Jesus Christ, became a follower of Jesus. He's a godly man raising his family and his two oldest daughters were recently baptized at our beach baptism. Baptism. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, that God is still at work in the world. And a young lady who was raised with a heavy influence of Islam came to this place called Grace Fellowship, a church for all nations, seeking truth. And she watched, based upon a recommendation by one of our ministry leaders, she watched The Case for Christ, the story of Lee Strobel on Netflix. And she said, that did it for me. I believe that Jesus Christ was the Messiah, the Savior, the Son of God. And she became a follower of Jesus Christ. And now she works for Grace Fellowship, a church for all nations. I'm telling you, God is at work in the world. And many of you give to our ministry called One Child, and we support over 200 orphans all around the world and orphanages in various locations. You give above and beyond your tithes. Thank you for that, because I believe that God is working through these next generations of children that otherwise would have no hope and no place and no home in the world. But the people of God in a place called Grace Fellowship, a church for all nations, felt burdened to network and to, and to do what God has called us to do. And I praise God for you, Grace. Don't stop giving to one child. Keep it up for the glory of God. You see, what I'm trying to say is that God is at work in the world. And in the last book of the Bible, Revelation chapter 7, in verses 9 and 10, 
The apostle John says, And after this I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number, from every nation, that's every ethnicity, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands. And crying out with a loud voice, salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. You see, it was said this way by one writer, the final goal of God and redemption and salvation is not to obliterate the distinctions of the peoples, but to gather them into one diverse but unified assembly of peoples. No matter what you see happening in the world, know that God is at work in the world. Two takeaways. Number one, know your family history. Your identity as a follower of Jesus Christ is of the most persecuted but most resilient group of people that has ever existed in the history of the world. The church, it's been said, is the anvil that has worn out many hammers. There is basically no type of philosophy, no form of government, no type of dictator that has not tried at one time or another to wipe out Christianity from its realm. But it's interesting that the harder the enemy presses against the church, the more persecution there is, it seems that there is more growth. So as a follower of Jesus Christ, know that you are among those, the family of God, who are persecuted. So I want to encourage you, if you are in this country and you have the freedom of religion, you have the freedom to worship God as you see fit, I want to encourage you to not forget the persecuted church. Some of my greatest heroes have come out of persecution. Man, I love sports. I love following that stuff. But who, what really gets my heartstrings, what really pumps me up, is hearing the testimony of a man, a woman, who has been under persecution because they named the name of Jesus Christ. It fires me up. And brothers and sisters, I don't want to waste my life. I don't want to waste my opportunity. I don't want to waste my freedom. I don't want to waste my money. I want to use what God has given me. I want our church. Let's be on point for Jesus Christ because God is at work in the world. And guess what? He's going to do his thing. He just offers us an opportunity to be a part of what he's doing in the world. So I want to encourage you, if you claim to be a follower of Jesus Christ, do not sit on the sidelines. You say, Pastor Jeff, I don't have a degree. Doesn't matter. I don't make a lot of money. Doesn't matter. You can do something great for God because Satan wants to tell you that unless you do a Billy Graham type of rally, that you're not doing anything for God. That's not true because the church and the work of God all throughout the centuries across the world is often built upon things that seem to be insignificant. I couldn't tell you the name of the person that invited my mom as a little girl to something called Vacation Bible School, wherein she heard the good news of Jesus Christ and she became a genuine Christian at the age of 12 years old. But I believe in large part the reason why I am here is because somebody, I have no idea who they are, I don't know their name, it's just somewhere up in the north panhandle of Florida say, you know what, we need to bring some kids to church. We need to bring them. And they brought my mom and she got, like Jesus really got a hold of her heart. And I believe again, that is in large part why I'm still, why I am here today at all. So number one, a takeaway would be no your family history, your identity as a follower of Christ. Number two is to go and make disciples. That, that's your mission. That's your main thing. No matter what you do for your life work, no matter if you're a student, no matter if you're a, a stay-at-home mom, that is your mission. It's my mission. And that's what's so incredibly cool because it doesn't matter your profession. We all have the same mission and we can do something. Every single one of us can do something for Jesus Christ. 
And you know what's incredible, those of us that are actually local here in Palm Beach County, is that the world has come to Palm Beach County. The world has come to South Florida. So let's not miss the opportunity. Some of you guys were born in places all across the world. Some of you were born here in Loxahatchee. You were born wearing camo. Like we come from all over the place. Let's not miss our opportunity, brothers and sisters, to make disciples and what continues to become an area, a region, West Palm Beach, Palm Beach County, South Florida, that literally, hear me, literally represents the world. The world has come to us. So being smart people, we say, Jesus says, make disciples of all nations. Yes, we support numerous missionaries here. We can't wait to get back into doing mission trips again and going and being of service, not showing up and saying, here's what we want to do, but saying, what do you need? We will try our best to help. We can't wait to do that. That's part of it. But it's also, if you live here, you have an unparalleled opportunity because the nations that Jesus told us to make disciples of, the nations that Jesus has told us to share the good news with, they live in our neighborhoods. Gold mine for the glory of God. Tremendous opportunity, a beautiful opportunity to reach people with the good news of Jesus Christ. John Jasper, who I mentioned earlier in this message, former slave, But Jesus Christ changed his life, incredible preacher. His final words on March 28, 1901, at the age of 89, are these. He says, I have finished my work, and I'm down at the river looking for further orders. I have finished my work. I'm down at the river, and I'm looking for further orders. What could we say Jesus' Jesus's orders are for you today? If you're not a Christian, if you're not a follower of Christ, his command, his plea is that you would repent from your sin, turn away from your way of life, from you being in charge, and place your confidence, your faith in him. Turn to Jesus. If you're a follower of Christ, the command of Jesus continues to be loud and clear. Get on mission and stay on mission. Are you on mission? If not, I encourage you to repent and return to the Lord Jesus Christ and experience the fullness of joy, the fullness of what life can be when you are locked into an eternal purpose that's far bigger than yourself, that is not dependent on upon the vacillations of politics and economic uncertainties, but it is rooted and connected to the heart of God for the nations. You see, God is at work in the world. Would you be willing to allow him to work in your life? Let us know through the Connect card if you are ready to give your life to Jesus Christ, if you have questions about the Bible, if you want to be baptized by immersion since Christ has changed your heart. We're here to reach out to you. We love you and thank you for being with us.
Thank you so much for being with us today at Grace Online. As we continue in our series, over the next several weeks, we'll be addressing powerful, life-changing truths from the Word of God. If you're ready to follow Jesus, if you want to be baptized by immersion, if you need prayer, or simply if you have a question about God's Word, let us know by filling out the online Connect card, and we will reach out to you. You can also help others by simply sharing this content. After this service, I want to encourage you, take some time and pray for those with you. If you're alone, reach out to someone else and ask how you can pray for them. Finally, if you're a member or a regular attender and you wish to give, you can give by clicking on the give link below. May the Lord bless you, and we look forward to seeing you next Sunday at Grace Online.